What's up guys, aspiring students, engineers, programmers, all of the above. My name is Joey and I hope I can give you some cool informative content about how I was able in my unique situation to finish my undergrad degree, my bachelor's at Boston University in only two years, computer engineering. It sounds pretty crazy, I know, because it is pretty crazy, but I hope I can give you some tricks that I did through high school to help me get in that situation, along with prioritizing work in college so I can really finish that degree in only two years. So the whole story begins back in my high school days. I went to a pretty nerdy high school where it had a lot of Asian people who competed over trying to see who had the biggest brain. And it was a pretty stupid environment, but overall I'd say it was helpful for academics. Anyways, one of the things we competed over was AP tests. So I'll explain how the AP system works in the United States. Over in international countries outside the US, those would be IB programs, but it's a similar thing. Basically, AP is where, during the high school year, you take a subject, say for example, AP US History. At the end of the year, you can opt to take a test. This test will cost you something around $120, at least when I took it. And you take this test at the end of the year. It's scored between one to five. If you score between generally a four or a five, then that test will give you credits towards whichever college you go to. Basically, it's a really useful thing where you only have to spend $120 to take the test, and if you're able to get a 4 or a 5, then you're pretty much wiping out a whole course from your degree. No textbook costs, no cost for the credits, no time cost for having to spend time to study for half a year for that semester in college. So me in high school, I made a ridiculous bet with one of my friends. My bet was that I'll take six APs in one year. Now, generally people take only like maybe one, two or three, but I just went all out and took six. And the bet was that if I can get a five, which is the top score on all six of them, my friend will have to ask out the hottest girl in the grade. And if I get a four or less on any single one of those six tests, I'll have to be the one to ask her out. We shook hands on it and I went in with that bet feeling really motivated to study hard and beat my friend at that bet, just to watch him feel embarrassed. So test results came out and I even managed to get all fives on every single one of them. So all in all throughout my high school, I took 16 AP tests. But the craziest thing about all of that is that for those 16 tests, I only actually took classes throughout the school year for 11 of them. The other five tests, I just studied for them on my own. So that's one of the crazy loopholes with AP tests. You don't actually have to take the class in your high school to take the test. You only simply need to sign up for the test, pay the money, and if you can pass the test, then you'll get that credit towards your college degree. It's a crazy trick and it saves you a lot of money, especially if your class or school just simply doesn't offer the test you want. So my school didn't offer AP government and history. So what I did was I found another school that's offering the test. I go to that school, I paid them the $120, and I asked them if I can take the test at their school, despite not being a student for their school. Well, I'm paying the money, so they gladly took the money, I was able to go take the test, got the results back, and I was able to get that score credited towards my college degree. That's the thing about APs. As long as you can study it on your own, you don't actually have to go take the class for it and then take the test. So if you're a high school student who wants to try to follow this yourself, here are a few things to look out for. The first thing I can say is to make sure that you know your test is being credited towards your college. So generally try to get a sense of what college you want to go into as well as what major you want to go into. Different colleges have different policies for crediting these tests. For example, when I went to BU, I took 16 AP tests, but Eight of them actually were the only ones that counted towards my degree. The other eight kind of had overlaps or just didn't count at all. So really, I only needed eight of those APs to actually finish my degree in only two years. Because of that, try to prioritize those tests so you don't go out and waste your time with taking too many that you don't need. So the next step is to find good prep books that will be useful towards you passing the test. So you generally want to find something that's kind of in the right size thickness for the book. You don't want it to be like say 500 pages because then you don't have time to read the whole thing. It would be like reading a textbook. 
You don't want to have something that's too small, like 100 pages, or else you're not learning enough information to actually pass a test. You generally want to get something that's 300 pages long, that's enough to hit most of the important topics that are going to be covered on the test, and you'll be able to use them to get the four or the five. So what I did is that for two weeks, I would study for two different tests. I would break it down eight hours per day for those two weeks, where for the first week, I would spend it just straight reading through the whole book, line by line, taking notes, flashcards, writing everything down, and just absorbing all the information. Once I do a full read through of the book with all the notes and the flashcards, then I'll spend the second week spending eight hours per day going and just solving the practice questions. I'll generally have another book, which would just be a book full of a bunch of practice questions. Afterwards, then I would just uh, spend that week solving them and practicing the actual test itself. So for which prep books should you get? Maybe generally Princeton Review or Barron's. You can look online and see what people are posting about on how to self-study for these books or what are the best prep books to take, but it will tell you which ones are good. Another thing that let me graduate earlier was actually going and taking college classes after school and actually getting the real credits for them. So what happened in my senior year was I had already finished my BC calculus, my math in my junior year. So I had no more math class in my senior year. Since I had a free schedule, what I did was I signed up for multivariable calculus at the Harvard Extension School. That's basically an extension of Harvard University where you just have to simply pay money to take a class. And as long as you pay the money, then you can actually take a class and get the college credits without actually being a real Harvard student. So I did that. And afterwards, I was able to actually get real credits that could be credited towards my degree. I did this for two classes, both of them which got credited towards my undergraduate degree at BU. So my best advice I can give you is that if you can see any nearby colleges, like community colleges, or any places where you can just go and sign up for a class directly without having to be a student and just paying money, then if you can do that and they can credit it towards your degree, you should go opt for that. Because um, since you're still in high school, you're going to be living with your parents at home. Because of that, you're saving money. You don't have to be living in a dorm and you can just get a few classes out of the way. So all in all, I came into college having wiped out a whole bunch of classes. Then what I did in order to finish the degree in only two years was during my summer after my first year, I just did a full load of summer courses. So I did four courses that summer and then afterwards in my school years, instead of doing the standard four classes per semester, I did five classes per semester. So basically, I guess then the next question would be, how do you go and you balance all of your time for this? So the first tip I can give you is just to start your work early and finish it early. The reason is because if you start it early, you'll be quickest to access the teacher's assistant. If you start late, the teacher's assistant will be bogged by so many other students coming and asking them for help. But you start and ask them first, they'll be happy to help you out first. And when they're helping you out, the productivity of your work is going to be accelerated dramatically. You'll finish it so much quicker than everybody who's queuing up asking for help from the TA. So that's my first tip. Just make sure you start your work early and finish it early. The second most important tip I can give you is always to get eight hours of sleep every night. The reason is that there's a lot of studies that show that if you're not getting eight hours of sleep, you are going to have so many problems. So sleep is where your brain actually goes and integrates all the information you learned at night. If you try to pull all-nighters every night, you're going to be passively absorbing information, but then it won't actually be integrated into your brain. It will kind of just get thrown out. I can actually attest for this myself. Back in high school, I was trying to practice for a performance for English. We had to recite a Shakespeare poem, and this is graded. So the problem was that I decided to procrastinate it and I tried to go pull an all-nighter. So I only had two hours of sleep that night. What happened was that I kept drilling it over and over for six hours straight. And when I actually came to the performance time, I was so sleepy that I literally forgot every single line in front of the teacher. I literally had to ask the teacher line, 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 line for literally every single line. Even though in practice, I was able to get it pretty okay. But after I had a full night's sleep, after just minimal practice from that night, 
I was able to go and perfect it the next day. So that's just an example of how sleep is important. The third thing I can say is just have good friends and good support systems. You can study with them and also just mentally, you'll be able to focus a lot better if you have good friends and you're not really stressed out about life. The next advice I can give you is don't take useless classes. So you might think, oh, it's just only a fun course that it'll just be good for my degree, it will be fun. When you have to do something for studying and for homework, all that fun suddenly turns not into fun. So some people might ask you, is it really worth it to finish and graduate early if you're going to miss out on a lot of college experiences and college fun? And the answer is absolutely no. So the reason is that, well, first off, do you really want the, your college time to be the highlight of your life? If college is going to be, say, like three or four years for people, then do you really want those time of to be the highlight of your life? You want the whole life to be the highlight of your life. So there's no reason why you can't keep making friends outside of college if you graduate early. You can still have the same friends and going to the same parties even if you're not a student anymore. It's not like if you're 22, you can't get invited to a frat party just because you're not in part of the same college anymore. I mean, people go to parties and they're not even part of the same college all the time. So you can always still have the same friends and go to the same parties. There's no problem with that. Also, there's no reason why someone should pressure you into staying in school just for the fun time when you have to think about it. Let's say you're paying, I don't know, an extra year of college just to save for fun. You're paying like $30,000 of tuition just to save for fun. You know how much fun you can have with $30,000? You could throw like a party every week for $30,000 when you're out and working. So go take that money you would have spent on tuition and just go throw yourself a party every single week because that would be a lot more fun than having to stay in school, take classes, and not really have fun when you could have graduated a lot earlier. So I hope this video is useful to you. As an overall summary, if I can give one way to summarize this video, it's basically try to know what you're looking for, take the courses in high school that will help you get those courses out of the way in college. When you're in college, be efficient with which courses you're taking, they'll actually need towards your degree. And then finally, just make sure you have a good balance of social life so you are not not going to get burnt out and you're always just going to be happy. And overall, if you can do those things, it won't be difficult for you to graduate earlier. You'll be saving a lot of money, get to the workforce earlier, and you can essentially use whatever money that you didn't spend on in college to save it or even have more fun than you would have had just studying in class. So hope all of this is really helpful to you guys and hope you can get ready for the next video. If you liked it, again, please give it a like so I can go make more videos. Thanks.